This is a presentation by Adam McPherson, Nathan Lamb, and Daniel Dang. So our presentation is on the data flow diagram. A data flow diagram is a graphical representation of the flow of data through a program. There are many symbols used to show how data flows through the program. A square solid line box represents an interactor. An interactor can be a user, a network, or a program. An interactor is typically what provides new data, requests data from a program, and reads data. An interactor can read, write, and edit data in a program. Essentially, the program is there to serve the interactor. An arrow represents the flow of data. Anything being passed from one part of a program to another will be represented by an arrow. A processor handles data within the program. The processor can verify the data, read the data, convert the data, and so on. Typically, a function in a program is a processor. When an interactor types a password into a program, that password would be represented by an arrow from the interactor user to the password prompt processor. That password prompt could send the password to a verifier processor, which would be represented by an arrow from the password prompt processor, processor to the password verify processor. Storage is represented by two solid lines, one above and one below. The name of the storage, it also repre often represented by a cylinder or cylindrical image. The storage can be in the program, it can be in a file, it can be in a database, and so on. If the user writes something to a file, what the user writes would be represented by an arrow from the interactor box to a processor. From the processor, an arrow would be drawn to represent what the user wrote to a write file processor, and from there, an arrow would be drawn from the write file processor to the file storage. A trust boundary represents something that must be passed to access parts of a program or data. A program boundary is represented by a box whose border is a dashed line. Every program contains a program boundary because to access the program, you must use or have the program. You cannot cross the program boundary without access to the program. If a user gains special access to parts of the program, then a user boundary exists. Typically, the only way to access the user boundary would be to log in as a user. So this is a data flow diagram we made for our web app, the LDS teaching app. As you can see, we have one interactor, which is the user interacting with the web app. The user gives and receives data from many locations. The user places his own personal info and schedule and calendar into the user view. The user view sends that user's calendar and schedule into the calendar view. The calendar view receives the user's calendar and any other calendar from the database, which can be a word calendar and any appointments made that affect the user. This calendar is displayed to the user through the user view. The calendar may also have appointments, which it sends to the database. Those appointments can be sent to the reminder view when the appointment approaches, which will send as a notification to the user. The user also interacts with the chat view. The user can make messages to other users. These messages get sent to the database, which sends the message to the user the message is meant for. If the recipient user does not have their web app open, it will send the recipient user a notification through the reminder view. The user sends and receives messages through the chat view, and the chat history is stored in the database, which allows users to view their conversations they had in the past. The user also interacts with the reporting view. The user can send reports such as, I have completed my home teaching assignment, which will be sent to the database. The database will keep a history of the reports. Leadership users will be able to view teaching reports and reporting statistics from the reporting view. Those functions for compiling the reports will be done in the reporting view using the data received from the database. Leadership users can also receive notifications through the reminder view that a user or a group of users or all users under that leader has completed their home teaching. The leadership will also receive a notification through the reminder when a new teaching report or, and statistical report is ready to view for the reporting month. Upside. There are many upsides or benefits to using data flow diagram. Data flow diagrams are very useful in explaining the logic within the system. 
it can help a developer or even a user know how their data is being used within a program and where it is going and what is happening. Data flow diagrams are helpful in showing the flow of data between the system and the users. It can help a software engineer know how a user's data is supposed to be handled in the system. Data flow diagrams are beneficial in describing the boundaries of the system. It can be useful to know how secure a user's data is, what checks and balances are in place. It can also show the steps necessary to access a user data to know how secure it is. A data flow diagram would show any backdoors to data. Data flow diagrams are easy to understand regardless of technical or non-technical audiences. A quick description of a data flow diagram to a user with no experience would be enough for the user to understand what they are looking at, which can be helpful to the user to know what is happening with the data. Data flow diagrams are useful when they are a part of the software design description. It can show the software engineers and designers what is supposed to happen with the data within the program and know what boundaries they need to set in order to protect or hide data. Downsides. Despite the benefits or upsides of data flow diagrams, there are a few disadvantages or downsides to data flow diagrams. One of the main downsides is that data flow diagrams can become very complicated for very large users, very large programs. It can be hard to, tr to keep track of data when there is too much going on. It is best to only show complicated data flow diagrams to developers and not users as to not confuse the user. It can take a long time to create a data flow diagram. Even though it is useful to have, it can be tedious to create and difficult to figure out how to make everything. You need to have a lot decided for your software before beginning the design process for the data flow diagram. Another downside of data flow diagrams is that physical considerations are left out. There is no real description of how the user can interact or create the data for the program. If your interactor is a program, then you don't know exactly what is happening to your data in that program. The interactor box is an unknown variable when it comes to your data. Another downside to data flow diagrams is that it does not show how data is passed or what exactly is happening. All data flow diagrams show are the connections between processors, interactors, and storage. It does not show how processors request information from an interactor or from storage. It may not show how to get past boundaries and so on. Our recommendations are to use data flow diagrams to describe movements of data in different system processes. Use data flow diagrams to show the hierarchy of movement of data. Use data flow diagrams when there are different levels of authorization for users. Use data flow diagrams when you need a way to show how data flows within your program. And to use data flow diagrams when the structure of the system is already in existence. So in conclusion, data flow diagrams are used to graphically explain how data flows through a program. It does this by having symbols for interactors, data flow, processors, storage, boundaries, and so on. Data flow diagrams can be very useful and are easy to understand. They can just take a long time to create and can get complicated for very large prog programs. We recommend the use of data flow diagrams for our entire web application, especially because there are many cases of authorization checking for different levels of users and data being passed around. A data flow diagram will be of great benefit to our web application. Goodbye.